Hello friends, I hope you are having a wonderful day. Uh, stop what you're doing right now. I have got a message for moms. We got a lot of special moms out there and what I'd like to do is I want to dedicate this message to you moms. Thank you for everything you do. Let me get started here. Proverbs 31. That, that right there is the virtuous mother uh, chapter in the Bible as far as I'm concerned. It starts out like this. Who can find a virtuous wife, a mother? For her worth is ab above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts in her. So he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household. It goes on to down to say, She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all of her household is clothed with scarlet. Don't you just love this? Uh, it says here, it says, Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom. And, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of the household and, and, does, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. I love that. Here go, here, listen to this. Charm is deceitful and, and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Join me in prayer. Father in heaven, we just want to take a moment to reflect on and to thank you for all of our mothers out there. Thank you for blessing us with mothers, and I especially want to thank you for my mother, who I love very much, and all the moms out there. Would you just pour out your spirit upon them and, and give them the blessing this whole weekend? And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Mother, mom. Mama. It's just something about that name. It just brings a, a floodgate of memories, probably to all of us. I mean, all the way from childhood, back as far as I can remember. Well, actually, it was Mom that brought me into the world. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> that was a miracle. But she reminds me, yeah, and I can take you out of the world too. So, but moms, there's just something about moms. You know, nobody could take care of me like my mom. Moms know our thoughts before we even think about them. She, it's almost like she's one step ahead of us. Moms are always there. When, when you're sick, when I was sick, I didn't want to be around nobody but my mom. And I still, when I don't get the attention like I should for my wife, Cindy, I got the best wife in the world too, but she can't take care of me when I'm sick like my mom. That's right. Moms. Moms are the ones that, 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 that are, are there. You know, she's the ones that, that take care of us. Um, you know, when I'm scared, when I was scared growing up, mom was there to comfort me. Let me know it's going to be okay. When I was scared to go to school, I remember I was scared to go to school. Uh, she said, it's going to be okay. You know, if you have any problems, I'll be right there. You know, and one time, mom was there for me. I remember I got in some trouble at school and then, and I probably got my feelings hurt. I don't remember exactly what happens, but I, but I remember leaving the campus and going to a nearby uh, little, kind of like a little restaurant. And, and when I come, and then I, when I got enough courage, I went back to school. But when I got back there, uh, the principal told me that, that, uh, that I was expelled. <laughs> I, what? They, I couldn't go back to school. So I went home, told my mom, and you know what she did? She marched right back to that school and she got in that principal's face and she said, my son Ricky, when he gets upset, he needs a little Coca-Cola to calm his stomach. <laughs> anyway, I got to go back to school. Yes, mom. You know, when, when we hurt ourselves, mom was there. Maybe our feelings got hurt. Maybe we got a skint knee. But mom was always the one that could make it feel better every single time. Mom is the one that bought me my first baseball glove. Mom is the one that carted me around everywhere, ball games, ball practices. Mom, super mom, always there, always. Mom, mom in my home was a spiritual leader of her home. 
She's the one that told me about Jesus. She's the one that carried me to church every Sunday. Every Sunday, my mom would carry us to church. And we got a little pen. We went so many years without missing a Sunday. That was a huge sacrifice, Mom, and thank you for that. Mom, Mom, you know, she was the one always there. Mom is the one that prayed for me. Mom is the one that worried about me. Mom is the one that stayed up as I got older and waited on me to come in. And, and Mom is the one that fed me. She's the one that... Prepared. Who's the best cook in the whole world? Moms. Moms are the best cook. Friends, mothers. Mothers truly are a blessing from God. They really are. No one deserves a special day all to herself more than today's moms. A cartoon showed a psychiatrist talking to his patients. Let's see here. He says, so you spend 50% 50 of your energy uh, on your husband, taking care of your husband. You stay, you take, uh, uh, you spend 50 more percent of your energy uh, with your job. And then you spend 50% more energy on your children. Ah, I see your problem. Do you get it? That's right. That's mom's. You know, a couple had some friends uh, over for a meal. And as they all sat down uh, to, uh, uh, to eat, the mother asked her young daughter, she says, will you please have the blessing? Well, this, the young girl was in shock. She just totally froze up. And she leans over and whispers to her mother. She says, mother, I don't know what to say. And her mom whispers back, just say what you've heard mother say to the Lord. So the little girl bowed her head. She bowed her head and said, Oh Lord, why did I invite all these people to dinner? <laughs> yeah. Oh, friends, it, it's not that easy being a mom, is it? It's hard to be a mom in these days, especially the day and time that we live in. Uh, you know, with COVID? I mean, COVID has is, is, is made it like, like it's crazy. How do, how do you do it, moms? How do you make it through COVID, moms? You already had to do all the cooking. You had to do all the cleaning. Uh, you had to do all the grocery shopping. You had all the bills to pay. You had all the laundry to do. You had to taxi everyone around everywhere to meet all the deadlines and all the commitments. But now, on top of every bit of that, all of a sudden, you have become the teacher. You have become the tutor. You have become the playground uh, uh, police. And, of course, you've got to be an expert in, 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 uh, in IT because everything now has is, is been turned to computers, you know. So how in the world do you do it, Mom? I mean, you're like super mom. Uh, I, can't even, I can't even imagine. Caring, and when do you sleep? And then, and then, let's not forget this. You've still got to be the friend to your children. You know, for one thing, they're, they're not having maybe the relationships they used to have with all their friends. So somebody's got to be there to provide that. Moms do it. Moms actually do it all. Let me share something with you. I think you appreciate this. This is Mom's translation of the 1 first, first Corinthians 13 love chapter. If I live in a house of spotless beauty with everything in its place, but have not love, I am a housekeeper, not a homemaker. Hmm. If I have time for waxing, polishing, decorative achievements, but have not love, my children learn cleanliness, but not godliness. Love leaves the dust in search of a child's laugh. Love smiles at the tiny fingerprints on the newly clean window. Love wipes away the tears before it wipes away the spilt milk. Love picks up the child before it picks up the toys. Love is present through the trials. Love repr reprimands, reproves, and, re and is responsive. Love crawls and runs with the child, then stands aside to let the youth walk into adulthood. Love is the key that opens salvation's message to a child's heart. Before I become a mother, I took, says the mother, I took glory in my house of perfection. Now I glory in God's perfection of my child. Good job. Well done, Mom. As a mother, there is, mu there is much, much I must teach my child, but the greatest all is love. Amen, Moms. Friends, the Bible is full of all kind of examples of godly mothers. But there is one in the Bible that I want to look at today that really sticks out to me because I said, that's my mom right there. So if you got your Bible handy, open it up to Matthew chapter 15. 
Matthew chapter 15. Uh, this mama is my hero right here. Now, the, the, the Bible doesn't even mention her name here, just simply the mom from Canaan. That's it. So we're going to pick up in verse 22. Are you ready? All right. Now, Jesus had just come into the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a mother of Canaan, a woman of Canaan, came from, from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. Not a word? Think about this. What, what would you do, Mom? What would you do here? Let's, let's put this, let's put some shoes on this. Let's bring it back to our time here. Your child, your child, Mom, is, is severely sick with this rare disease. And here's a specialist that, that, that who's come into your little small town here that you have heard that is 100% successful in curing this rare disease that your child has. What length would you go? What would you, length would you go to get help from him? For your, for your daughter. Hmm? You know, wh what, if he, what if he initially just ignored you? What would you do? Hmm? I mean, this is the only hope. Think about this. This is the only help for your baby. What would you do, Mama? What would you do, Mom? What, what, if, what if his friends that was, that was all around him, what, what if they just told you to go away, go away? You know, he's got more important people. Is there anybody more important than your daughter? I want you to notice something here about this mother uh, that, that, that you need to take note on. When she cried out, did you notice the wording when she cried out? She said, Son of David, Son of David, have mercy on me. Now the very first thing, and this is so important, moms, is that this mother, she knew how to fight right. She knew how to fight right. She knows her word. The, there is a battle going on. There is a war raging between good and evil, moms. And, and, and our children and our grandchildren, uh, they're out there. And, 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 and they, they, they are clueless, some of them, to, to this battle. And, and the, the way to fight is the word of God. She knew her word. And that's exactly what she's doing here. She knew that this, this was not just the carpenter's son. She knew that. And she was letting Jesus know that too. She was, she was letting Jesus know she had faith in the Word of God. When, when she called Him Son of David, she's telling us something here. She's telling us that He, that he was the promised one. That, that He is the Messiah. That He is, is the Almighty Savior, the great healer. And she knew that. She knew that. Now also, now think about this, moms. Uh, at that time, not now, but at that time, it was not appropriate for, for, for women to even speak out in the crowd. And I'll take it a step further. Not only was she a woman, but she was also a Gentile. That's right. She, she was a, a Gentile. But even still, but even still, at any cost to herself, because it was her baby's only hope, she was laying it on the line. She, what she was doing, she wasn't going to give up. Jesus was her only hope. And, and she had her eyes. She had her eyes on the only hope that could save her children, and she was not going to let go, and she was not going to give up. Now, I want you to picture this scene here. The Bible says that she just kept on crying out. She just kept on crying out. That finally, the disciples told, her, told Jesus, send her away, send her away. But did she give up? No way, she didn't give up. Would you moms, would you give up? Would you let the only hope that your child had just walk right out of your sights? No way. No way. You would do the very same thing that this mom's doing right here. Verse 25 says, this is what the Bible says she did. 
she fell at his feet worshiping him, saying, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. And you know what Jesus did? I've got to read this in verse 26. This is what he said. It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Ouch! Ouch! Oh, that had to hurt. That had to hurt. But you know what? No pride here. She didn't care what nobody said. She was on a mission. She was on a miss mission to save her baby. Yeah, she did. Did she give up, mothers? No way. She didn't. No. Listen to what she said. She said, Yes, Lord, but even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall, fall from the master's table. She says, All I need from you, Jesus, is a word. I just need a word. Have you, have you ever been there, moms? Have you ever been in, in one of those places in your life and you, it looked like you was up against a wall, you, it looked like there was no hope, and you were just crying out just like this mother right here, and, and you were going through your Bible and or going through a daily devotional, or, or maybe you're talking to a friend and, and asking for prayer, and there it is, God gives you the Word. Just that Word, that Word of hope, and the door is open. That's exactly what's happening right here. So moms, can I, can I say something? Don't give up. Don't ever give up on God. Don't ever give up on Him. It doesn't matter what the circumstance is. It doesn't matter what, what He did or what she did. It doesn't matter what she's doing or, 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 or He's doing. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what the doctor said. It doesn't matter what everybody else is saying. Mothers, don't ever give up on God. Now, friends, our faith is in God, not even our children. Because our children are just deceived. Remember, they're, they're just blinded. They're vexed. Uh, like this little girl was vexed by the devil. They're vexed, you know, and, and, and like that. But just don't give up on God. When, when you can't understand, when you can't understand God's hand, why He's uh, allowing this to happen, trust His heart. Because I want you to know, He cares about what's going on in your families. He cares about your children. He cares about your grandchildren. And He wants good for your family. And so, don't ever give up. Just keep crying out to Him. You've got to understand in this battle between good and evil, it, 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 there, there, there's, a, there's certain, uh, what I call, rules of engagement. For example, uh, God, God can't do anything for us. He's not going to force Himself. But when we pray, it opens up a channel. Now, I'll give you, for example, my own life. I was not praying. I was not praying. I, I, did, I was so vexed, so, so out there, that I didn't even know to pray for myself. Friends, when you're deceived, you don't know you're deceived. So that's what the case here. I was vexed, just like this young lady here. And so my mother, my wife, and my mother praying for me, Praying for me, it gave God an opportunity, a channel to work in my life. You see? So don't ever give up because God wants the best for your family. And when you pray, it gives Him an opportunity to work. Now there's a lot of us out there that are watching right now, just like me, that would not be here if our mothers had yet give up on us. But they didn't. They just kept on, kept on, and kept on. They weren't going to give up on us. You know, so mothers, don't give up. Don't give up. I don't care what's going on right out there right now. Just keep praying. Keep praying. And you know what? Mothers keep believing. When everybody else gives up, mothers don't. Everybody else quits believing in you, mothers don't. They keep believing. They just keep believing. They just got it in them. They keep pressing on. They get up at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And, and, they, and they get right back in the ring with God, pleading, pleading, Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. I need a miracle. I need a miracle in, in my child's life. I need that miracle. No one else can save him. No one else can save her but you, Jesus. Please, I need a miracle. Every morning, every day, they're right back there in the ring, wrestling with Jesus. You know, I could, ju I could just see a big smile coming over Jesus' face. Um, and here in this situation here, in verse 28, listen to this. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Let it be to you 
as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Wow. Let's wrap this up. I want you to think about this. The daughter here, the daughter, she could not pray for herself. She couldn't do it. You know, she was vexed with the devil. Are you listening, moms? Are you listening? The only way that she could be healed, the only way is for her mom to stand in the gap for her. That's the only way. Maybe the only way that your child, your grandchild, is going to be healed is because you determine not to ever give up on God. Maybe, maybe you've given up on them a long time ago. You know, I'm going to say that's okay. But don't give up on God. Keep believing that, that God is able to do what He says He can do. He can save to the uttermost, the Bible says. That's anything from guttermost to uttermost. God can do it. He did it in my life. He can do it in your child's life. I know it. And I know we live in a, a crazy time. And we do. Uh, and if there was ever a time that God needed mamas, that God needed mothers, that would not give up, that would, that would, that would stay in the ring, and that would know how to fight right, God has given us some artillery right here. This word right here is full of promises, moms, that you can stand on, that you can claim for your children. One of them is Isaiah 49, verse 25. Isaiah 49, verse 25, where God promises to, to, to save our, our children from the big bad enemy. He promises to save our children. Why don't you claim that scripture? Let me pray for you. And I don't only, I don't only want to pray for, for you, moms, but I want to pray for your children and grandchildren. Will you come in agreement with me? Father in heaven, I want to lift up all the moms out there that are watching right now. Maybe they'll watch later because I'm hoping some of these moms share this with their friends who has children that, that maybe the world's given up on them. But I pray that this can be encouragement here today from you, that you want to work a miracle. There's moms out there, Lord, that need a miracle, and I'm asking for a miracle for them. I'm pleading the blood of Jesus. I'm claiming that Isaiah 49, verse 25, where you promise to, to take back our children from the enemy and save them. And, and Lord, I, I plead the blood of Jesus, and I pray for all these children that you would save them, Lord. Save them into the kingdom, Lord. You tell us in James 4, 2, we have not because we ask not. We're asking right now that you save our children, our grandchildren into the kingdom. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. God bless you, moms. We love you. Know that Jesus loves you. And have a great day. Bye-bye.